Can you raise the right hand? Say hallelujah. Yeah. My dear sisters and brothers, you know, uh, what I want to really speak to you today is uh, a marriage in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Say hallelujah. Yeah. Marriage will not work. Listen to me. Hmm? Marriage will not work if you are not connected to the Holy Spirit. If you don't pray to the Holy Spirit, if you don't let the Holy Spirit take control of your married life, your married life will become empty. It will be empty, it will become boring at some point of time in your life, you will just li live it. It will become very routine, that's what I mean, no? The marriage will become very, very routine, no life, uh, no low life and you know, yeah, yeah. But ma God didn't create marriage for that, right? That's why, you see, the Holy Spirit is critical, not just in marriage, in the Christian life itself. Amen? Amen? So that is why... How can the Holy Spirit help us in our marriage? We are married people, right? How can He help us? Why is the Holy Spirit so important in our married lives? Why is the Holy Spirit so important in our family life? And what can it do for us? What is the work of the Holy Spirit? How can He bring our marriages alive? Here it is. In John chapter 16 verse 7. The words of Jesus, yeah? He's preparing his disciples. So Jesus is saying here, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage I go away, for if I do not go away, the counselor will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. Amen. So Jesus, after three years with his disciples, is preparing his disciples that he has to go. That was God's plan. He had to go. And he said, I tell you the truth, I go away, it is your advantage. If I go away, I will send the counselor. The Holy Spirit is the counselor, right? So Jesus had to go to send us his very own spirit. And that is why Holy Spirit is important. We know this, right? Holy Spirit. You see, sometimes we wonder, no, who is the Holy Spirit? Because, you know, there is a lot of images are confusing. Because of a lack of image to the Holy Spirit, we put images, they're okay, because we need an image, right? We need something visual, that's fine, but that is not the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Look what Jesus is saying about the Holy Spirit. One, one verse, one verse, amazing verse. In John 16 verse 13, Jesus is saying, When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on His own authority. Whatever He hears, He will speak. He will declare to you the things that are to come. Amen. Say hallelujah. Yeah? Jesus is very clearly saying here, the Holy Spirit is a person. Just notice in this one verse, five times, Jesus is saying, He. Not it. You can, why is Jesus introducing the Holy Spirit as a person? Because only with the person you can have a relationship. Am I right? Correct, no? I don't know, some married people may have without person, no? Earlier in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit, how we knew about the Holy Spirit? Fire, cloud, oil, wind, yeah? When you read these scriptures, when you read these uh, uh, words, especially in the Old Testament, you realize the presence of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit. But when it came to Pentecost, it changed. That's why it is so important as a Catholic couple that you develop a personal, intimate, personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. He is the giver of life. Nobody can have a relationship with fire. Hey, can you have a relationship with fire? Hello? Look at me. Hello? 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 Dow? Hmm. After this retreat, go and put your finger in the fire and say, Hi, I love you. You cannot pray to fire. You cannot pray to a dow. You cannot pray to oil. You cannot pray to a cloud. You can pray to a person. And that's why Jesus is bringing this new revelation now. I'm talking about till Pentecost. That's why he said, wait. 
wait for this power that is going to come upon you and the 120 waited in the upper room they were praying for the coming of the holy spirit and the holy spirit came how again as fire correct no but after that after acts chapter after acts chapter 2 you will never find the word fire no cloud no wind no doubt you know what the apostles are calling the holy spirit he 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 spoke to us he guided us he instructed us see that relationship and when you develop a good relationship with the holy spirit that's exactly what he will do that's why jesus is preparing us so if you want your marriage to be you know joyful and happy you know marriage some people think you know marriage is you know you're getting married god bless you they'll say finished who is saying that married people right because their marriage is so poor ask those people in the youth section they want to get married <laughs> they're already ready there you know they brought rings and came it seems ask them they want to get married ask the married couple they want to remain single hmm. what an irony right why we have not discovered our vocation we have not discovered the uh, the fullness of the vocation to which god has called us because the single thing you know when i get married everything will become okay we know no can you go and give them a talk when to get married can you share your own marriage experience with them so what is important is you see i'm not what we're trying to say here is we're not saying we're not putting down marriage surely not it's god's call but marriage can come alive all your life all your life if you pray to the author of marriage the holy spirit you can turn it around there's no such thing as you know my marriage is over some people say brother my marriage is over what a wrong statement to make remember yesterday we said words have power be careful words have power how many how many how many women have told me this married women have told me my brother my husband this is my husband good for nothing hmm. what a sad state right what is he good for nothing how many men have told me brother my wife is a pain in my neck One guy told me, brother, I don't even have a neck. Hood pecker. See, if you have such images and don't rectify our speech, don't change our speech, our life will become miserable. I'm telling you, it will not change. You can have the best retreat experience, sir. That's why it's important for us to make sure as a spouse, you know, we connect with the Holy Spirit. He brings unity. He brings love. He teaches us. He guides us. He tells us what to do. He tells us where to go. He tells us where we should not go. He helps us in decision making. Amen. That's why Jesus said, it is your advantage I go. Because if I do not go, I cannot send the counselor. It is to your advantage. Look at the word Jesus is using. It is better I go. In other words, he's saying. So that the counselor will come. And you know, the Bible is very clear. Huh? The Bible is very clear. And the Catholic Church says, oh, okay, we'll follow the slide in case it is there. Let me uh, give you an illustration of the Holy Spirit, right? Who is the Holy Spirit? Imagine this red car, Ferrari, yeah? Beautiful red car, it's red in color, got radial tires, it's got good uh, upholstery, got good tinted glasses, it's got good music system, it's got lovely air conditioning system, it is engine is not working. Who will buy a car, sir? Who will buy a car? Where the engine is not working, unless you're a crazy fellow right no use being we are like that exterior we look good engine is not working engine is not working that's why have you noticed everything in the christian religion is boring 
For many people, it is boring. We go for every day for mass. We go for novena, divine mercy. We pray the rosary. Then what else we do? Pilgrimage to Valankani. Then we what else we do? We come to do, to retreat centers. But at the end of the day, end of the day, why is my life so miserable? End of the day, why? Because I have got everything. Engine is not working. At the end of this talk, I want to do something for you before I leave today. I will start the engine for you. Amen. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'll start the engine for you and tell you how to sustain your walk with God. I've done it for 50 years, sir. I've done it for 50 years. I'm still on fire. Amen. <laughs> Say hallelujah. That's what the Holy Spirit will do. He'll bring your faith alive. He'll bring new energy. He'll bring new zeal. He'll bring new passion for God. That's what he'll do. Because he's the spirit of God. He dwells within us. It's no use just, you know, having exterior. No engine is working. So the Holy Spirit is that engine. He is there in us, but not working. Dormant all our lives. Why? We have not prayed to him. We have not prayed to the Holy Spirit, right? Come on, we, we Catholics don't pray to the Holy Spirit. We pray to everybody under the sun, right? Everybody under the sun, we pray to Holy Spirit? No. He is God, He dwells within you, and because you don't pray to Him, He is sleeping. Dormant means what? Sleep. Your life is empty, it has no power. You cannot overcome anything. You don't know how to handle simple things like anxiety, fear, doubt, unbelief. You don't know. You don't know how to combat sickness. You don't know how to combat the evil one. You are a prey to the evil one after going to so many retreats. And that is the reason why Satan has come and trying to divide our marriage. He knows where we are weak. He knows it. He knows our weaknesses. He knows we are not connected to the lifeline. The lifeline is the Holy Spirit. Amen? Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. So this is very important, isn't it? You see, the Catholic Church says this so beautifully. The Catholic Church says, through baptism, all Catholics have received the Holy Spirit. Amen? Say hallelujah. Through baptism, all Catholics have received the Holy Spirit. So where is God? Where is God in you? Holy Spirit is God, no? Hello, yes. yeah? Hello, yes or no? Holy Spirit is God. Where is He? In you. Through baptism, all Catholics have received the Holy Spirit. You know why it's so confusing? Our songs are confusing. Especially the songs of the Holy Spirit, all confusing. Come Holy Spirit, from where to come? He is already in you. Our songs are wrong. So we, when we come and pray to the Holy Spirit, we are looking up, come Holy Spirit, uh, come, 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 come. Holy Spirit must be saying, I'm there already. Wrong idea, see? When you have a wrong idea, that's why you must reprogram your mind. You must renew your mind. God's Spirit is in you. God is in you. Amen? Say hallelujah. God is in you. He is in you. What does it mean? Wherever you go, God's presence will follow you. Wow. Correct, no? God is in you. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, what does it say? Don't you know your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. God resides in your body. Amen. Amen. Wherever you go, His presence will go with you. Wherever you go, you'll experience His peace. You will experience His joy. Why? God is in you. But this realization, this awareness must capture your mind. Otherwise, every time you'll be praying, Lord, come with me, I'm going for an interview. God is saying, I never left you. You never prayed to Him. Only interview time you prayed. Increment time you pray. Appraisal time you pray, marriage time you pray, crisis time you pray, then you say bye. 
That's our problem. Our relationship with God is only high by, high by, high by. I was like that. Till I made a retreat at 18 years old. When, I, when the preacher told me about the Holy Spirit, how important the Holy Spirit is in the life of a Catholic. Till then, Christianity was boring. Trauma. You want to go through trauma? Go for the sacraments. Without the Holy Spirit. Boring. I remember going for Mass, 18 years old. Priest will start Mass. The minute he starts Mass, I will look at my watch. When is he going to finish? When will he finish? When will he finish? End of the Mass, he said, the Mass has ended. I said, thanks be to God. Trauma finished. Is there wrong, anything wrong with the liturgy? No. Is there something wrong with the uh, uh, Eucharist? No. Is there wrong with the sacraments? No. Something wrong with me. You know, uh, early days, early days, <laughs> we used to sing a beautiful song. It's just gone off. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of change. Change. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of change. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of change. Not my brother, not my sister, not my father, not my mother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of change. I am the culprit. But at the retreat, I opened my life. First time in my life, I have heard about the Holy Spirit. How many retreats we make, right, in college? Schools. Yeah, if you study in a Catholic school and a college, every year there is a retreat. I don't know, right? Every year there'll be in a retreat. I don't know how it is. In Bangalore it is. Don't come there. Every year, dama 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 ritualistic. I attend retreat like that every year. Two day, two day. Preacher slept, we slept. Two days. Oh, relax. Go on. What he said, God knows. What he's saying, he only doesn't know. So boring. Doesn't connect with people. No illustrations. Just Terry. It's killing our youth. You know that? It's killing our youth. Youth will come to the Lord when they see Christ alive in you. Your children will come to God when they see Christ alive in you. You. They'll come to God. You don't have to do anything. Amen? Say hallelujah. Yeah? So through baptism, all Catholics have received the Holy Spirit. So you know, see, married life, if the Holy Spirit is not active in your life, you know, if it becomes very dormant, you have never prayed to the Holy Spirit, let me tell you the truth. Your condition will be like this. Your condition. This is like putting a spiritual thermometer into your marriage. Ah, sub-zero. Your married life will be, you know, it will become routine and boring. How many times I have found spouses tell me this. Brother, about their spouse, he's boring. She is boring. How can a person become boring, no? You're not devoting time. There is no communication. There is no heart-to-heart -heart talk. You never go out to drink a cup of coffee together. You never do that. You are just thought marriage is only taking up for children, children. Some couples only live for children, children, children. Husband is sitting in a corner. Mm. Poor fellow. We don't give, we don't, we don't, we don't give them time. We don't give time to our spouses, wives, right? My man is working, working, working. He'll tell, for my home only, eh? I love them. Work to work to work to, he died. Unable to leave the marriage covenant. How much of infidelity is there in marriage? Right? We know that, right? You know it, I'm sure. That's why, you know, what happens nowadays, we don't trust each other. Couples don't trust each other. When they come back home, couples have something called mobile audit. Yeah. 
They look into your mobile. Who is that Johnny? Why is he calling you so long? So, so many times. And who is that Nirmala? Nirmala. Who is that Nirmala? Suspicion. You know what research tells us? Suspicion is the number one killer in marriage. Suspicion. Second one is what? This possessiveness. You know what is possessiveness? Yeah? Possessiveness means no, you don't give your spouse freedom. Wherever you go, you're too possessive with your spouse. Who are you talking to? Who is that fellow? Who is that lady? Oh, really? Oh, you're speaking. Reka. Ah. Everywhere your eyes is going. You are, looks like you have CCTV camera fixed. We have become so miserable. Possessiveness, suspicion, possessiveness, infidelity, unfaithfulness to the marriage covenant. Sometimes it may not be physical, it can get emotional. There are emotional, you know, uh, hookups, emotional hookups at work. Why? Because you are not giving your, your spouse time. You don't talk to your spouse. You don't go out with your spouse. But now this Nirmala, oh. She smiles at you when she sees you. <sighs> Spark. Tuck. Woo. Your wife never smiles. Your husband is grumpy. He is like a bulldog when he comes from work. Who wants to see a face like that? Who wants to see a face like that? Hey, it's your marriage. Do something about your marriage. Take care of your spouse. You yeah, focus too much on self, not on the marriage, not on the marriage partner. Only me, me, my needs, my needs. My rest time, my entertainment. <laughs> no. We have to make sure we live for the other person. You live for your spouse. See what your spouse is interested in, what he likes, what she likes. Live for them. When you live for the other person, then your marriage will blossom. That is Christian life. Jesus came to be, we are called to be other centered, other centered, not self centered. When you're other centered, you'll immediately notice a change in your marriage. Inabil inability to adapt to situations, seasons in life. What else? Uh, you know, we already spoke about this, right? Pride, ego, suspicion will rule your marriage. I know it all. There comes the problem. Don't tell me what to do in my marriage. How many people live in self denial? How is your marriage, sir? Super. Then go to the wife. How is your marriage ma? Useless. That fellow is saying super. Why this game? Because we are in self-denial. We, we don't want to tell the truth. We like to hide everything. We don't want anybody's help, you know. I know it all. You don't tell me. It's my marriage. I'll do what I want. I'll live how I want. No. There is a rule book. There is a rule book. You and I are called to live according to the rule book. The master plan for marriage is in this book. And if you live according to this master plan, your marriage will turn around and be in the right path that brings life to you. That's how it is. Otherwise, why should God propose marriage? It, it is he who said it's not good for man to uh, be alone, you know, not open to suggestions, unable to forgive, love, respect. We're just gone. How many retreats we attend, right? 10 retreats, 20 retreats, 30 retreats, 40 retreats. You will be canonized for, uh, you will be saints for retreats, you people. Amazing. Yeah? How many retreats we attend? But we cannot forgive, you see. I challenge you. I challenge you. Tonight, you will wash your spouse's feet. Tonight. Yeah? You will wash your spouse's feet. And you will tell your spouse, forgive me. But that's not enough. It's an act. When you go out of this place, leave it out. No use coming to a retreat center and going out of a retreat center in the same condition. We were not speaking, we continue not to speak. I only speak to God. Wow, what a guy. Are you like that? Can you make peace with your, uh, with your spouse 
at the end of this talk, take a little time, you get 15 minutes break, sort out, you know, whatever it is, you know, maybe minor things, sort it out. You know why they have become a mountain? You never sorted it out. You put it under the carpet. Time will heal. Huh? How like, we we'll love that statement, no? We, time heals, time heals. For some it healed, for some it healed when you went to cemetery. Time doesn't heal, sir. Time doesn't heal. Time makes you to forget. It doesn't heal. It doesn't heal. Be very careful. It will surface. At some point of time in your marriage again. Again the wounds will open up. Again there will be, it's ruptured. Again there is misunderstanding. Then you'll struggle all your life. Please meet your spouse after this, after this session. Hold a hand. Hold his hand. And you know, even if you have nothing, say I love you, you know. Can you say to your spouse, I love you? When was the last time you told your spouse, I love you? Everything else you love. Food you love. Ice cream you love. Weather you love. Your spouse? Mm. Yeah. Please, after this, after this talk, if, if, that is if your spouse is here, eh? don't take anyone and say, I love you. I mean, I mean, what I meant is, if your spouse is here, yeah. It's important. I tell my wife every day, I love you. Every day. Mm hmm. Mm. Yeah. She's my wife. Every morning I'll say, Good morning, I love you. Every night I'll say, Good night, I love you. Every day. Every day. I'm in love with my wife. Be in love with your spouse. That's all it involves. People are not looking for great things in life. People are looking for, you know, this kind of small little thing. I love you. I care for you. I will pray for you. My wife every day tells me, I'm praying for you. She knows. Of course, she knows I'm preaching here. Every time she writes, I'm praying for every one of you. How nice to get that support. And that's why God will move. Then God will move powerfully because there is the support of a woman, the wife behind you. I didn't, uh, I didn't come against her will. I didn't come against her will. No. She's a missionary too. She told me, go. And this is very important for us, you know, to make sure there is some, we learn to uh, forgive, love and respect. And that's why I say, remember we said this, so Pope Francis said, every Catholic must learn three things. Please, thank you, sorry. Do that fast. When the Holy Spirit is not active in your life, yeah, he's just sleeping there. Remember the car, engine is not working, you'll become 3D Catholic. Who's a 3D Catholic? 3D Catholic is this dressing, drinking, dancing. All your life. Yay, party. Yay. Finish. That's all. How many Catholics are on the road to highway to hell? Don't become like this. There is a time for fun. There is a time for entertainment. There is a time to go out. Yes, everything is there. But get God at the center of your marriage. Pray to the Holy Spirit. He is the giver of life. He can infuse life into your marriage. When the Holy Spirit is not active, you know, I am telling you. I want to test you. Okay, I'll test you a little later. I want to tell you this. As I said already, you know, everything will become boring in the church. There was this priest, he was celebrating Sunday Mass, 7 a.m. Church is full, 7 a.m. Mass. But hardly they could open their eyes because of Saturday night fever. Straight from the dance club, they came for Mass. Finish the obligation, right? Let's finish the obligation. What happens there? Nobody cares. So the priests were celebrating Mass to a Sunday sleepy congregation. And when he was preaching, there was a power failure. So he looked into this mic and he said, there is something wrong with this mic. And everybody responded and said, and also with you. <laughs> They're not listening. Dead. How often, I want to tell you, how often we know what is read, gospel reading, first reading, gospel reading, second reading, how, how often we remember them from us. Make a survey. Sunday when you go to your parish, 
let me give an exercise yeah sunday when you go to a parish you know when the last song is sung the recessional song is sung wherever you are seated you get up and go to the entrance of the church and wait there and as people mass has got over the last song has got over people are coming out of the mass ask them this question excuse me what was the gospel reading 99% will not know 99% we are just lost what a sad state right what a sad state the word of god is life but i don't know it's fallen jesus said you know in the parable of the sower it has fallen uh, fell on just you know on thorny bushes that's gone satan came took away and gone left you empty after mass left you empty you go back to the same house same crisis same problem same difficulty same illness sign of the peace can become tamasha no sometimes it's like gymnastics once i was in bangalore attending mass here's this lady next to me do you know how she gave me the sign of the peace this way <laughs> she never looked at me. it's called sign of the peace god bless the woman we have lost everything isn't it you know why you know why everything is so meaningless in our lives because we are not connecting to the holy spirit he is dead he is dead in our lives ignite him activate him through a simple prayer and i'll tell you he will take control of your life the eucharist will become alive amen for me also it was boring yeah i was preaching once in kenya you know the the africans love music we know that right the africans love music you don't have to tell them please stand please clap we don't have to tell them only in india we have to tell them no in india also have you noticed how we we clap in india only in india we do this we clap like this god is good no more we don't even you can't hear god is good we have lost it lost it So here I am in Kenya preaching uh, open air, open air program, three thousand people, and uh, oh, their liturgy. I'm not saying we should uh, uh, follow them. That's their liturgy, but it, there is celebration, right? Liturgy is celebration, right? Eucharist is Thanksgiving, right? You celebrate three thousand people. Wow, on their feet, dancing. You know how the African, yeah, 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 yeah amazing, yeah. And the opening song. the priest is coming he is also dancing yeah not like our priest no if they dance god bless you <laughs> they are so alive he is dancing and touching everybody touching everybody touching everybody the entrance song the entrance song they had to sing three times because he is not come to the altar still celebration three hours three hours i'm not saying we should do what they are doing i'm not saying that our culture is different it's okay but what is important is celebrate find your way to celebrate find your own way to celebrate please celebrate the eucharist who will help you to celebrate surely the holy spirit other everything will become boring for you so the holy spirit can do it. what can the holy spirit do in our marriage yeah so many things you know i just you know too many things he can be a helper he will help you in any situation i'm telling you it's amazing start praying more to the holy spirit he will help you amen say hallelujah say hallelujah <laughs> say hallelujah holy spirit is called helper you pray to him he will help you any situation uh, holy spirit is our advocate how nice you know amazing isn't it he's our advocate he will plead on your behalf somebody accused you somebody said something wrong against you i'm talking especially our in our family you know that uh, that uncle joe ayappa useless fellow uncle joe you know they they you no know, character assassination they they you know put you down don't worry 
the holy spirit will is your advocate he will vindicate you he is our counselor what an amazing situation how much we run for counseling i am not against it but let me tell you one truth if you go for counseling with the same problem to three different people they will give you three solutions you know what will happen to you you will be more confused but when you pray to the holy spirit the counselor he will guide you he is the wisdom of god he will tell you what to do he'll tell you what to do he is our comforter we go through crisis of sadness grief maybe sorrow maybe who will comfort you holy spirit you lost a job surely it's not an easy thing but holy spirit will comfort you he is an intercessor how nice pray through the holy spirit for your children for your marriage for your spouse for your finances for your health for your uh, uh, job situation business situation through the i only pray through the holy spirit he is our intercessor the best intercessor number 1 he can assist us john 14 verse 7 uh, 16 and i will ask the father and he'll give you another counselor to be with you forever amen who is with you forever holy spirit he dwells where in your heart amen where is god where is god in us amen That's why Jesus said I came that you may have life and life have it abundantly. The Holy Spirit can infuse life into our marriage, bring passion back into our marriage. Can I tell you something? Someone said there are three golden rules in marriage. Three Three golden rules in marriage. Number 1, communication. Number 2, communication. Number 3, communication. communicate with your spouse have some heart to heart uh, exchange speak go out for a cup of tea coffee once in a way please we find time for everything we don't find time for our spouse what a sad state when i say communication i'm not saying uh, breakfast is ready come no 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 i'm not talking about that communication that is okay that is all every day no but there, is, there are some issues that you want to speak to your spouse. So make sure you make some time. It's called quality time. Right? Make some time for your wife. Make some time for your husband. And it will, it will strengthen your marriage. Yeah? Holy Spirit brings life. He helps me to live and love for my spouse. Uh, help me to become open and accept suggestions. Yeah? Especially for us men, we love to give answers very fast. My wife also, when she's talking, I have this... I have this quality time with my wife. Yeah? So when she's speaking, I already want to give a solution. Men are like that, no? Tuck. Fix, fix and close it here. Yeah. Analytical we are. Nothing wrong, but that's how we are. But it must change also, right? Sometimes I immediately, before she's finished, I want to give a solution. She'll tell me, I don't need a solution. I don't need a solution. Just listen to me. All they want is to listen. Not solution. You can get solution from anybody else. Don't be too quick to give an answer. Don't be too quick to give an answer. Listen. Just listen. My wife, for two years, she wanted a break. She worked in an international school. And I know what time she'll come. You see? I know what is her lunch break. At lunch break, I will give her a call. In two minutes, how are you? How was your day? I did lunch, blah, blah, blah. I love you. Yeah. Someday, her colleague got suspicious. She asked Priya, who is that guy who calls you every day, 12.30? Priya said, it's my husband. She said, what? My husband, I'm married to him for 21 years, has never called me. When he goes to work, he forgets me. Don't be like that. Don't be like that. Emotional attachment, yeah? Wives, you can also call your husband. Honey, did you eat my chapati? Alu? 
you know, it's, 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 it's partnership, right? It's partnership. When Priya comes back from school, 3.30, hmm. if I'm at home, I'll make her a cup of tea. Yeah? I'll make her a cup of tea, and I will keep it in the dining table, and I will also sit down there. Because I know. See, this is personality makeup. I know. Woman wants to share. I'm telling you this. Woman wants to share. Taka, taka, taka. It will go like living water soon. Yeah. So I keep the cup of tea. She'll sit down. I know she has to. Sh she'll want to share what all happened in the day. Correct, no? Women are like that. So I'll sit and listen. I know. 30 minutes I have to give her. She'll be talking, some Anita, some Nirmala, God knows who they are. You listen. If I, if I don't give her the time, right through the day, she'll be telling about Nirmala, what happened in school, da 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 Finish it, no? It's got off her chest. I'm not saying just do it for a sense of duty, but that's important. Men, we don't communicate. Men, after they get married, Change their spirituality. Their spirituality becomes contemplative. They don't talk. How are you, honey? Mm. How was the day? Mm. Was the food good? Mm. Poor fellow. Doesn't talk at all. Hey, do something now. Come to the center now. Who will do that for you? Holy Spirit. So that's very important. Hey, have this, you know, understand, you know, women like details. Men are not people of details. We're not people of details. We're analytical. Come to the point. <laughs> we always say, just come to the point. masala. Come to the point. Correct, no? If I go now to Bangalore, when I go tonight to Bangalore, my wife will ask me immediately, how was the retreat? She asked me every day, but still, she'll ask me, how was the retreat? What topics you spoke? How was the attention of these people? Uh, you know, I speak. Men, men, no? Uh, how many were there? 100. Full stop. Till next question. What's topic? Topic. Uh, one more question. So they have to put questions, questions for men. No? The, the answers will come. But if Priya, imagine, uh, if Priya goes to uh, give a talk somewhere, and I ask Priya, Priya, how was the teaching? Priya will start like this. I went downstairs, waited for auto. Auto didn't come. I said, Priya, teaching, teaching, teaching. And you know, the auto went wrong way. He charged me double fare. I said, Priya, teaching, teaching, teaching. She'll come to actually what I want after 30 minutes. <laughs> but that's how they are. That's why you should understand the makeup of a woman and the makeup of a man. We are different. Don't try to convert your wife to become man. And don't try to convert your husband to become a wife. You'll have suffer. All your life. That's why God's idea about marriage is the best. Male and female. Don't ask me how two females and two men can live together. If two men live together, they will never talk. If two women live together, God bless you. <laughs> That's why God's order is the best order. Male and female, he created them. He brought them together because we complement each other. Amen. When we complement each other, we become complete. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Yeah. So do that, you know. Do that. Very important to make sure our marriages work well. Ability to change. Yeah. Holy Spirit will bring order, you see. He'll bring order in our life. You know, he'll teach you time management. Right? How important time is in our marriage, right? Scheduling is so important. Yeah, uh, make sure you're uh, ordering finances. How many families are suffering because very poor finances? You see, God has blessed everybody. Why are you in poverty? You know why? You mismanaged your money. You didn't know how to manage your money. You were not a good steward of money. You mismanaged it. You're in poverty. God does, you were not born into poverty. That's not God's plan in your life. God has provided for every single need for every one of us. We. I mismanaged it. You must repent if you're in poverty. Yeah? You must repent if you're in poverty. You mismanaged. You were not a good uh, steward of God's resources given to you. When you repent, God will set you free. 
God will set you free. Order in our marriage and in personal life, as we are saying, no order in our marriage. How can order come in our marriage? Hey, you know, understand the woman's makeup, understand the men's makeup. Read some books on Catholic books on marriage, you know. Sometimes read some books, you know. Understand your marriage partner better, right? So that your life will become more peaceful, right? Your life will become more enjoyable, right? Your marriage will be better, right? Your children will live in a good uh, uh, environment. They'll be growing in a good environment, amen? Order in extended family relationships, you know. There must be order. Work being order, at least business relationship, in the sense like, you know, we may not be very close to my mother-in-law. We may not be very close to her family. But we are coming from families. In India, someone said, when in India, when you get married, you get, two families get married, right? In India. We can't, we can't I can't tell Priya, your family useless. Will she like it? No way. Can she accuse me of my family? No way. It brings hurt. It brings pain. It brings misunderstanding. That's why 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 7 says, you know what Peter is saying? Amazing. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 7, you know what Peter is saying? Live in understanding. How beautiful, no? Live in understanding of each other. Understanding takes time. Understanding comes only when you spend time, quality time, communication. Then you start understanding your spouse. And, and Peter says in 1 Peter 3, 7, caring for each other. I like that word. Caring, care. You know, I'm an Anglo-Indian. Mm -hmm. I'm Anglo-Indian. So my culture is, you know, different. Broad-minded, not conservative, not narrow. I'm an Anglo-Indian. I'll hold my wife's hand and walk on the street. I'll hold. I'm an Anglo-Indian. But my wife is a Tamilian. She's become Anglo-Indian. <laughs> you know? What I mean to say is, it's not just to become Anglo-Indian. Broad-minded. Don't, eh, there is no conservatism is not to be applied in your marriage. Show affection a little bit, no? To your wife, to your husband. Not the, we are not saying public affection, but you know, what is the problem to hold hands? He or she is your spouse, right? That's why when I'm in couples retreat, you now I preach some of these couples retreat, I'm very careful. I tell them, hold your hand, but make sure it's your spouse. So live in understanding and care for one another. Brothers, can I tell you something? Please take care of your wife. If you don't, Someone else will. Once and away from your office, can you give a call? Honey, what's happening? What did you cook today? How was your day today? Just that much. Can we do something like that, please? Can you do that? Hello? Uh, say no. Again, go back home. And I told that fellow. Hey, please, it's your marriage. It, I'm telling you, it will bring life. Suddenly your wife will say, wow. Because it, he knows you are preoccupied with her. You are thinking about her. Honey, did you have lunch? I say, wow. He cares for me, right? Correct, no? First thing you say, he cares for me. He's thinking about me, correct, no? Please do that. Every day make a call. Don't go to office and forget and then come home like a bulldog and throw your tam tantrum. Uh, for you only now I'm doing it. And your children. Don't be like that. Marriage is a covenant. It is your marriage. Don't kill it. Don't kill it. Bring life to it. See how you can bring life. Hey, never forget your anniversary. Hello? For everybody else, we will give a rose. For everybody else, we will buy a rose. Hmm. And how often we can play to the gallery, you know. We can have this saintly look. Have you noticed some people? Saintly look. You will think he is the best spouse in the whole world. He loves everybody else's wives except his own wife. Yeah. What a saintly guy. Wow. Two, two wives one day were discussing. Two wives. This wife was telling the other wife, 
look at your husband such a great guy so decent well mannered da 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 this wife told this wife you want him take him <laughs> why outside show outside show she'll tell him hey i am living with him for 17 years you will not live with this guy for 7 days show 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 mask junk it take care of your wives never forget her anniversary never forget her birthday please buy a cake and go correct no do something to enhance your relationship my dear sisters can i say something to you take care of your husband right you know what time he comes from work am i right prepare tea and keep for him right don't say bye it's in the kettle sit with him talk with him he won't talk too much i want to tell you that but sit with him your presence is enough for him make sure you are concerned how was your day honey he won't say much mm he may say doesn't matter what are you going through in work he may share a few things that's the best time and, and, and every every man let me tell you this huh every man likes his wife to look good you know that hello yeah every man likes his wife to look good when you know your husband is coming home please dress up don't put that nighty all the time what that nighty are putting and sitting like that like one uh, you fried fish full fish fry honey he ran away no dress up a little bit look good look good enhance your marriage make it work well then only marriage works you know, otherwise you will be like you know nobody is bothered even he won't look at you the holy spirit will help you to overcome any weakness in your life i know marriages are struggling because of alcoholism drugs pornography sexual sins uh, uh, sometimes emotional tie ups and maybe having another partner somewhere else infidelity the holy spirit if you if you live according to the flesh you will die but if by the spirit you will put to death the deeds of the body you will live the holy spirit will do that for you pray to him every day you know the you know the weakness of your spouse better than anyone else pray to the holy spirit to crush that weakness that weakness in your spouse husband or wife will die pray i tell this to married couples this is what i have to do keep your spouse's photograph in your phone i'm sure you have yeah you have no some are looking at me oh really who is that you have your wife's photo no brothers yeah i'll tell you a trick i follow this for my children also for your children also every day yeah every day or if not every day uh three times a week let's put it like that i'll put my my wife's photograph or my daughter's photograph or my son's photograph and i pray for 180 seconds i pray in tongues as i told you whatever method you want to pray you can pray you want to say a decade of the rosary that's fine you want to say divine mercy that's fine i pray in the spirit 180 seconds all that i cannot do all that i don't know what is happening in my wife my daughter my son holy spirit knows he will work it out amen say hallelujah hallelujah your life will become easy amen say hallelujah your life will become easy you don't have to change anybody you don't have to do anything you ask the holy spirit to assist you ask the holy spirit to help you he will do it that's how it is your boss is troublesome is your boss troublesome to you take a photograph of him put it on your phone and pray for him 180 seconds and you will see a remarkable change in his life nobody can resist the power of the holy spirit nobody 
Because when you start praying to the Holy Spirit, He will bring a breakthrough you have never seen in your life. He'll bring a breakthrough and He'll make sure you are victorious in that situation. Is your mother in law troubling you? Daughter in law troubling you? Keep the photograph. Pray. Don't get into civil war. Let your marriage not break because of your mother in law, daughter in law. You're right? You know what Google says, survey. The number one marriage breaker. Google survey says the number one marriage breaker is parents. Parents. We poke our nose too much into our children after they get married. You must be like this, you must live like this, dal curry must do. What do you want to worry? What they eat. Leave them, let them go. Free them. Don't break their marriage. You desire them to get married. Now you are working opposite against them. You are separating them. Let them go. Just free them and let them go. Don't hold on to your son. Hello? Don't hold on to your son. Some, 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 some others have got their sons married, but actually they are in control of their son. Let him go. He is not your security. God is. He is not your provision. God is. Let him go. Don't destroy somebody else's marriage. God will come against you. You know that? You know that? What God has put together, no man can separate. No one should separate. You know that? So take God's word seriously and make sure that your children your own marriage is in peace, reconciliation, happiness, joy, love is present in your marriage, including your children's marriage. Don't side your children. Don't take up for your children. Let them decide what to do with their life, where to go, where to migrate, where to put their money. Let them do what they want to do. Let them go. Free them. Don't hold on to them, please. So many marriages in this country are dying because of this problem. Parents are the cause. They're destroying some marriages, poking their nose too much. Any weakness you have in your life, the Holy Spirit will kill it for you. You know, it can be any addiction, smoking, drinking, TV, Facebook, eating, I don't know what else, no? Instagram, green gram dal. I don't know, some, how many, by the time I put this, something else has come. Don't, be, don't get hooked, son. Sir, don't get hooked, please. Can you give some... Make time for your spouse a little bit. Make time for family time, please. Make sure you eat a meal at least once every day with your entire family, please. Once. Let not TV take your time. Don't eat in front of the TV, please. TV is... Don't eat in front of the TV. Put it off. Or even if it's on, it's okay. But you'll be on the dining table, right? Who is more important for you? Pornography. So many people are involved in it. You know why I, married people? You know why married people are involved in it? Do you know that? Why married people are involved in it? Because they get nothing from their spouses. They get nothing from their spouses. There's no family life. So they watch all these blue films, pornography. They don't. They look so. Uh, they look at a, in a very bad way to the opposite sex. So you must make sure your family life is good. Make sure your family life is good. Google says, survey, 93% of men are involved in pornography. How many percent? 93. Where is the seven good percent? Here. Amen. Yeah, become good. 
be part of the 7%. Google says 66% of women are involved in pornography. Women. We are in a mess. Sexual things, wrong relationships. That's why they have this idea, no? Stepney. Have you heard Stepney? Spare wheel. Oh, oh. Why? Marriage is not good. If you have a good marriage, you won't have a Stepney. You won't have a Stepney. If your marriage is good. Your marriage is bad. You are getting nothing out of your marriage. Therefore, you are getting involved in another relationship outside your marriage because your own marriage is not giving life. Say hallelujah. So I want to do one thing before you leave. Yeah, permit, give me another two or three minutes. You know, I want to start the engine. Amen. Are you ready? Say hallelujah. Are you ready? Yes. You will find remarkable difference. Because when the engine starts, you start praying to the Holy Spirit. God will take control of your marriage. God will take control of your life. He will turn it upside down. And you will have a purpose to live. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at this. Example, before I just say a short prayer for you. Just a short prayer. Here's a cup of tea. You put a teaspoon of sugar. You give it to someone to drink. How will it taste? How will it taste? How will it taste? It will be tasteless. Because you need to stir the sugar. Am I right? You see, when you put a teaspoon of sugar into a tea, what happens? It settles at the bottom. It, that's how it's happened to the Holy Spirit. Through baptism, we received him. We didn't stir him up. We didn't pray to him. Settled at the bottom of our life. What must you do? Stir him up. Stir up the sugar. When you, you know, when you stir up the sugar, the sugar flavors the tea. Am I right? The sugar flavors the tea. Then you drink the tea and you say, Vataj. Tea is so good, yeah? That's what happened to your life. We'll stir up the Holy Spirit. He'll flavor your life and he'll bring life. Then the Holy Spirit will awaken in you. Praise God. <laughs> Say hallelujah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm just going to teach you a three-line prayer to the Holy Spirit. Okay. Uh, it's a simple prayer. Pray daily. I pray daily. Yeah? When you pray to the Holy Spirit, you're establishing a relationship with the Holy Spirit. What are the three-line prayer? Holy Spirit, I love you. Holy Spirit, be my helper. Holy Spirit, take control of my life. Ready? Can you repeat? Holy Spirit, I love you. Holy Spirit, be my helper. Holy Spirit, take control of my life. Say it again. Holy Spirit, I love you. Holy Spirit, be my helper. Holy Spirit, take control of my life. When you pray like this every day, every day, every day, when you pray like this, the Spirit of God that is within you already, right? Holy Spirit is already in you. You know what will happen? He will surface. He will take control of your life. He'll become the Lord of your life. He'll become the master of your life. He'll help you in any situation. He will be your advocate. He will be your comforter. He will be your counselor. He will be your intercessor. I'm telling you, all that you need in your life, the Spirit of God knows it. Now He knows it because now He's in control of your life. He knows what you're going through. He knows what, is, what you'll be going through. He will take control of every situation, any, anything in your life, and He will start working it out for you. Amen? He's God. Praise God. Yeah? So keep your hand on your heart. Both your hands on your heart. And close your eyes for three minutes. And keep your hand on your heart. Become aware. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Temple. God is in you. He's not outside you. He's in you. He dwells within you. You are God's temple. Your body is God's temple. And as you keep your hand on your heart. Pray to the Holy Spirit so that he will, we are stirring up the Holy Spirit. He'll come alive in your life. Say this after me. Holy Spirit, I love you. Holy Spirit, be my helper. Holy Spirit, take control of my life. Holy Spirit, I love you. Holy Spirit, be my helper. Holy Spirit, take control of my life. Silently, you say the three lines. Establish a connection. Ask the Holy Spirit to take control of your life. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.